Ikuta badika dokobo. Ikota baya. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. You are watching Kingdom Life Network, the television for the total man. But naturally, therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be blessed. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. I want to welcome every one of you joining us by way of Kingdom Life Network on Facebook, YouTube, and all our campuses around the world. We're glad to have you joining the service. Get ready. The word is going to build you up and you will never be the same again. Let's celebrate our viewers around the world for being a part of this service today. Glory to God. Somebody excited about 30 days of glory here? Are you excited about the victory we have in Christ? Well, wave your hands. Let's give Jesus a shout as we celebrate our victory this morning. Glory! Somebody shout amen. You can be seated with your sweet smart self this morning. Let's get in the world. Mm -mm. Glory to God. Alright, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Now please pay attention because we are getting to the conclusion of all the things I have thought in the last 30 days. Almost 30 days. We're almost there. All the things I have thought, I'm, going to be, I'm, I'm beginning to tie them together so you have a holistic picture of everything I have said in different you know, forms and you know, scattered here and there. So pay good attention. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. And have from infants and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Faith in Christ Jesus, we establish, will be faith in the blood. Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Romans 3, 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Righteousness is by faith, not by works. Righteousness is by faith, not by works. There's nothing anybody is capable and able of doing that will make him righteous. Only the finished work of Christ makes a man righteous. Righteousness, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Not even my faith. His faith is what makes me righteous. By faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Give me the next verse. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Alright, so since there is no difference, the law of Moses does not differentiate between anybody and anybody. So since there is no difference, the law has condemned all of us. All of us are guilty under the law. Because nobody can keep the law for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin destroyed sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of God may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So our righteousness is a person. His name is Jesus. Alright, so since all of us have been condemned under the law of Moses, that is why all of us have sinned in the eye of the law. Because by the law shall no man be justified, Jew or Gentile, moralist or immoral, all condemned by the law. The law has shut everybody's mouth. So the only way we can be righteous is by faith in the work of Christ, in the sacrificial work of Christ, the finished work of Christ. Give me the next verse, verse number 20, 24. Being justified freely by his Justification grace. Justification is free of charge. You don't pay to be justified. Freely by his grace, yeah. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The word grace means somebody did the job. I am just called to benefit from the work. That's what grace is. Grace is God's willingness to give to me as a beneficiary what he has suffered for. So grace is God giving me freely what I never qualified for. And that grace is called salvation. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. Saved by grace. Give me 25. <clears throat> Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Through faith in his blood. That is faith which is in Christ Jesus. Faith in Christ is faith in the blood or faith in the sacrificial work or faith in the finished work of Christ. 
that is faith in the blood or faith which is in Christ Jesus salvation through the propitiation through a prop set for to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God all right so salvation is a pure work of grace complete work of grace and when you are saved you are saved complete you are saved complete you are not going to keep believing for salvation you believe once and you are saved once and once you are saved there's a closure it's not as long as you keep believing you will be saved no you are saved and the moment you believe and you are saved you are saved it's not a continuous believing if it is a continuous believing then there is no rest if it's a continuous believing then it is no more grace at the end of the day then i have to be rewarded for holding on but it is not a reward it is a gift that is why there's a closure once you are born again if i'm clear can i hear a good amen all right now i said all of that to continue from where we stopped on friday second timothy second timothy chapter 2 verse number 11 to 13. <clears throat> It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So we began to do some exegesis on the word faithful saying. Get the CD, it will be clear when you get the CD of Friday. Now, I'm just going to move. There is a difference between salvation and reward. There is a difference between salvation and reward. Reward is not salvation. Salvation is not reward. Salvation is a free gift of grace. Reward is what is given to those who are saved and did the work of ministry. Reward is what is given to those who are saved and after they are saved freely they now submitted themselves to do the work of ministry and we're going to see that in detail doctrinally so you must know that clearly so that when you begin to read scriptures that talk about salvation and reward you will know the difference between the two of them the scriptures for salvation are not the same for reward and the scriptures for reward are not the same for salvation we must all know that there is a difference between reward and salvation now i said that to say what i'm about to say the book of first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 <clears throat> but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others I myself should be a cast away. I myself should be a cast away. And sometimes when people read this scripture because they do not understand the difference between salvation and reward, then they think you can lose salvation. But this scripture is not talking about salvation. This scripture is talking about ministry. Let's look at the pretext quickly. Verse number 16 of 1 Corinthians 9. 16. I mean, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the so gospel. So the pretext is about the preaching of the gospel. Next verse. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto so me. So I can do it willingly, I can do it unwillingly, but I am doing it. All right? If I do the ministry willingly, I have a reward. Okay? But even if I'm not doing it willingly, there's a dispensation that is committed unto me. Next verse. What is my reward then? So you see, reward is connected to ministry. Necessity is on me to preach. And there is a reward. What then is my, what is my reward then? Go ahead. Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. And this is talking about merchandising the gospel. There is a difference between merchandising the gospel and honoring the men who preach the gospel. These are two different things. 
This is talking about merchandise, making merchandise of God's people, taking advantage of people's ignorance and taking advantage of people's gullibility and milking them and collecting monies from them in the name of God just because they don't know the scriptures. Robbing the people of God blind. And he says, any man of God who engages in merchandise, that merchandise is his reward. And we shall see it more clearly as we read on. Alright? Now, so brother Paul says, if I am merchandising, that is I am abusing my power in the gospel. I'm abusing what God has given me to bless people. I have perverted it and I'm using it for material gain at the expense of their soul. I'm twisting the scriptures. I'm bending the scriptures so that I can use it to my advantage at their detriment. I don't know if I'm communicating. When a man of God says, if you do not give money, you cannot be blessed. He's abusing the power available to him as a preacher. Because that is fraud. That is not correct. That can be correct. That is fraud. You don't need to give to be blessed. You are blessed, that's why you give. Are we here? Uh -huh. So, uh, the abuse of the power available to me as a preacher is when I pervert the scriptures and take advantage of the illiteracy of believers and use it for my material gain at the expense of their spiritual development. For example, a preacher who will tell you of generational causes. Therefore, so a seed of 10,000 for freedom from generational causes is abusing his power in the gospel because there's nothing like generational causes for a born again man. A man that is born again has only one generation. You are born of God, it's God and Himself, and there's no cause in God, so a believer cannot have generational cause. So, Brother Paul was talking about merchandisers who use the Bible and twist it at the expense of truth to enrich themselves all right this is different from people honoring their man of god this is different from people saying oh my pastor has labored in word and doctrine therefore i must honor his labor by giving to him materially that is scripture and if you do that there's 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 a reward for that before the lord jesus are we clear if we're clear, say I hear you. All right. Now, read on for me quickly the next verse. <clears throat> 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Next verse. 20. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. 21. To them that are without law as without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. I become all things so that I can gain people. Still talking about ministry. Next verse. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I am living sacrificially so that the gospel can affect people. Next verse. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Next verse. Know ye not that they, that they which run in a race run all, but one perceiveth the prize? One well, receiveth the prize. The word prize there. Now, first of all, race there is talking about ministry. Ministry is a race. It's not salvation. I'm running the race to meet my redeemer. I'm running. No, no. We're not talking about salvation. Heavenly race and no go tire. Heaven is not a race, it's a place. When Brother Paul talked about running a race, he was talking about ministry. The work of ministry is a race. Why is it a race? Because there are laws that govern ministry, just like there are laws that govern a race. Are we clear? So he's dealing with ministry. Yeah, he's not dealing with salvation. You're already saved. Your salvation is not on a debating table. It's a settled work because of the finished work of Christ. But now, after you are saved, your life after salvation is what we are dealing with here. 
because you are not just saved to die and go to heaven you are saved to live a life on earth that is of service to God and to the people whom Jesus died for because that is what you will be rewarded for you are not going to be rewarded for accolades that society gave you you're going to be rewarded by Jesus for what you did in the advancement of his mandate on the earth somebody say I hear you please this is very important all right so he now begin to use the analogy of a race to talk about ministry still context what he's dealing with next verse and every man that striveth for the mastery in, is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. the secular people who are racing do it for a corruptible crown but we are incorruptible but we are incorruptible now please take this quickly the word prize the word prize he talked about prize in verse 24 24 quickly give me 24 know you know that they that run in a race run all but one received the prize the word prize in the greek is the word parabellon parabellon p-a-r-a-b-e-l-o-n parabellon parabellon is prize or a reward prize or a reward parabellon verse 25 now he now says in verse 25 and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible crown the word crown is the word stephanos stephanos just like you have stephen stephanos you know a crown a crown and it is used for a test when you pass a test you are given a crown a reward a crown all right read for me verse 26 now we're heading to the climax of this reading <clears throat> i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth. I am not doing ministry aimlessly. I am not doing ministry without a target. I'm doing ministry according to the rules that govern ministry with a target in mind. I'm running a race in the work of the ministry with a target in my mind. Please listen carefully. Next verse now. <clears throat> but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I myself should be a dokimos. That's the Greek word for castaway. A dokimos. Disqualified. Disqualified from what? From the prize of the race called ministry. Not disqualified from heaven. I'm already in heaven. I'm already saved. I'm already born of God, but in the race of ministry, if I do not do it according to the rules that govern ministry, I will be disqualified from my reward. Now, and Brother Paul said, when you are disqualified, you will suffer loss. Now, listen carefully. Ministry here is not just Dr. Damina. Ministry is all of us. Remember? He that ascended is he that um, he that descended is he that ascended and when he ascended up on high he gave gifts to men for the perfecting of the saints and the saints will do the work of ministry every one of you here is in a ministry race all of you whether you know it or not whether you do it willingly or not you're all in a race and at the end of the journey jesus the master is going to reward you for what kind of ministry you did whether you did it willingly or not or whether you ignored it and treated it with levity the day of reckoning is at hand these are things you hear and it should affect you completely because if all you think of is life on earth, you are the most miserable man on the planet. Brother Paul says, Abhi Jesus said, if all our hope is only in this world, then we are of all men most miserable because there's nothing of this world that guarantees you a reward in eternity. Nothing. Doesn't matter what, what position you hold in your office. It doesn't matter... What, what, what you have acquired on earth it doesn't matter 
what influence you have it does not guarantee you a place in eternity the only thing that will guarantee you a place of reward with jesus is what you do about his finished work and that is called ministry that is called what ministry everybody whether you know it or you don't know it it does not excuse you ignorance is not an excuse that's what brother paul said if i do it willingly there's a reward but even if i don't do it willingly a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me please pay attention this is very serious i took time early hours of this morning and i prayed for every one of you in this service today very seriously because i want you to come into the fullness of god's purpose and plan for your life where christianity and ministry is concerned so that you have no regrets when we stand before the lord jesus remember again one scripture we read and then i will proceed with what i'm doing but is it clear now on what a castaway is a castaway is a man that is disqualified from reward why he did not run lawfully he did not do the ministry according to the laws that govern the ministry just like an athlete who is supposed to run but broke the laws of the game he is disqualified they give him red card they give him warning first then they give him a red card why because he's disqualified with all his hours of preparation with all the sacrifices he made with all the training with all the investment one mistake in the field disqualified him same thing with ministry same thing with ministry i said to men of god i said some the way some of you do ministry the way some of you men of god do ministry you forget that one day we shall face jesus face to face and he's going to ask us for everything we do in the name of ministry everything we do if men of god know that one day jesus is going to confront us for this thing we call ministry they will be careful some are not aware some are having a few time some just think you know after all when we get to the bridge we will cross it <sighs> there are bridges you can't cross they will cross you that's why only a fool does not sit down to count the cost before engaging in the journey are you with me here yeah serious matter and it affects all of us because none of you here will say i'm not a man of god and none of you here will say i'm not a woman of god i don't care what you think i'm telling you the truth none of you your excuse is useless right now in fact yours is worse than people who have not heard because you know, I've shown you in the scripture, I've taught you hours and hours and hours. You can't claim ignorance. You know what ministry is. You know you have a call. You know there's an assignment on you to reintroduce Jesus to this generation. You're not ignorant. No matter how you pretend, you're not ignorant. You're not ignorant. including those watching on television, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere, you know. 1 John 2.28 <clears throat> And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Did you remember we read this on Friday and did exegesis on it? We will not be ashamed before him at his coming. His coming is judgment. His coming there is the judgment that we will confront as believers. That word ashamed is the Greek word for shrink. We shrink in shame. We shrink in fear. We shrink in lack of confidence. We are not proud of what we have done. We are not proud of our ministry and service. So when he appears, we will shrink. Because we are not proud of what we have done. So brother John says, let us be careful. Let's stay in him and do what we ought to do. So that 
when we stand before his judgment we will not be we will not shrink or be ashamed that you're ashamed of your child doesn't mean he's no more your child so you're saved but you can be ashamed before jesus but you are saved is it clear yeah you can be ashamed before jesus because when your walks when your walks on earth and when, when I talk of works, and I'm not talking of morality or immorality, that doesn't come into the reward. That doesn't mean it's not important, it's good. But I'm talking about when it comes to reward, you'll not be rewarded for morality and immorality. You'll be rewarded for ministry. Is it clear? You'll be rewarded for what? Ministry. And that's why Brother Paul is saying, so that after I have preached to others, I will not be disqualified because I didn't run the race lawfully. All right? Now, I'm going to get in some crazy things now. Are you ready? Let's get a walk. Thank you, Lord. I say, thank you, Lord. So what will be disqualified will be the works of men, the works of believers. All right? The word crown is the word stiffness. And sometimes when we say crown, a lot of people think crown, it, we're going, they're going to wear something on our head. You're thinking like a mortal man. So let's look at what this crown is. What will be this crown that Jesus will give us? Philemon, I mean Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -mm. Therefore my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. He called human beings his joy and crown brethren you are my joy and my crown it's not i'm going to wear something on my head my crown are the people i have brought to christ my crown are human beings the human beings that i look around in church are as came into christ and are established in the faith because of me when i see those brethren they are my crown it's not something you will wear on your head. All right? Look, read it again, girl. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Stand fast, because you are my crown. Stand fast. You are my reward. Stand fast. You are the product of my, my ministry. Stand fast. Be strong. You are my joy. You are my crown. That means a brother that looks around the church and nobody has come to Christ because of him has no joy where reward is concerned. You are my crown. Pay attention. So brother Paul calls human beings or people he brought to the kingdom as crown. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is You are our crown. You are our crown before the Lord Jesus. The people we have brought to Christ. The people we have won to the kingdom. The people we have discipled and established in the house of God. The people we have established in Christ. They are our crown. Look at the way brother Paul put it. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing. And not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming judgment next verse read for me next verse for ye are our glory and joy. you are our glory and joy the human beings we bring to christ they are our glory and joy and some of you always say let's go for evangelism you feel like we're saying go and enter fire because you do not understand the gospel if you understand the gospel, that will be your height of excitement because you are going to, to, to get joy, crown, rejoicing into the kingdom, the reward for your ministry. The reward for your ministry. Look at the way Brother Paul put it in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. Unto all them that love his appearance, there is a crown he will give to me. He's talking about ministry. There is a crown he will give to me, and not to me alone, but to all those who love his appearance, all those who love the judgment. With judgment, the judgment for works. Why do they love the judgment for works? Because they know what they have done and they're excited to confront the judgment seat of Christ, the beamer seat, the beamer seat of Christ. I'm going to get in that in a short while. They are not afraid to confront that day. They are not afraid. James 1.12. James 1.12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So now, brother Paul says, that crown is going to be as a reward of tests and trials for ministry. Ministry is going to bring temptation. Ministry is going to bring persecution. Ministry is going to bring trials as a reward, as a result of ministry. Those trials and temptations sometimes people will misunderstand you sometimes people will misinterpret your actions sometimes people will step on your toes sometimes people will take your fruit your character in christ which is the fruit of the spirit for granted and abuse you but because of christ when you should have reacted you consider their faith and you are rather cheated for them all of those trials for souls will be your crown Those trials. Sometimes you go through rough times. In the course of ministry. I go through things that some of you have no idea what it is. I go through things. Travel for hours. Sometimes the car breaks down in the bush. We sleep in the bush all night. Wake up in the morning. Clean up and continue the journey. Because people must hear the gospel. And sometimes we get into hotels. I've been in a hotel with mama where we slept on the bed. As we laid on the bed, our waist went in. So we stood up and we lifted the mattress. And that was the best hotel in that city. When we lifted the mattress, all the springs in the middle have, have cut off. So we had to take the mattress. And this is not long ago. Why? We know how to abase and abound. In whatever condition, for the sake of souls, we are content. It's not every time it has to be rosy. There are times it's rough. There are times I finish preaching and I'm hungry because through the day I didn't eat well. And I finish preaching, I come to the hotel. The restaurant is closed. I have to sleep all night without food. All for, for the sake of the gospel. Brother Paul said, in fastings often, not that I declared a fast, but circumstances made it difficult for me to eat. So it became a fast. All of these are trials and persecutions. Things we go through for the sake of souls. And there is a crown, a reward before the Lord Jesus. This is not butter and bread Christianity. No. No. This is Christianity. The way Jesus designed for it to be. Sometimes you trek for evangelism. Rain is beating you. You are persevering. There is a crown. There is a crown. No labor is in vain. He said be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord ministry. For as much as you know, you should know it. That your labor is not in vain. Where? In the Lord. Not labor of, of, for, for malaria. No. Labor in the Lord. Not that you went somewhere and collected somebody's land and they beat you and remove your teeth. You say, I'm suffering for Christ. Eh, you're suffering for your selfishness. That one has no reward. That slap is your reward. But if the labor is in the Lord, you go for evangelism and the person you are preaching to gets angry and gives you a slap, that is persecution for the gospel. There is a reward. There is a reward. It's called the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. Which the Lord shall give to me. 
and not to me alone, but to all those who love is appearing. Glory to God. First Peter 5 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. A crown of glory. When the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. The word crown is a figurative expression of reigning. The use of the word crown, dear for reward, is figurative. It's a figurative expression of reigning. A figurative expression of reigning. Notice that whenever he talks about crown, he is talking about ministry. Every time he talks about crown. Every time you see crown in the Bible, it is connected to the work of ministry. Every time. Every time you see crown. You will not be crowned for salvation. It's not your work. There's no crown for you because you got born again. Born again is not your work. It's the work of Christ. No crown that you got go born again. The only crown is what you did after you got born again in populating heaven and depopulating hell. And the things you went through in the course of this noble assignment. Teaching good? Everyone is dead quiet. I like it like that. There's no crown for you being a Christian. There's no crown. You should be grateful, self. You should be grateful that Jesus was merciful enough to die to save you. That's enough. That's enough. No crown. You should be the one rather crowning him for saving you. But if he will crown you, it is what you do in the kingdom that will make him crown you. Teaching good? Yes. Very important. Huh. Selah. It was only James that talked about trial. All the other references we read, they are all about, you know, souls. Human beings as our crown. Only James talked about trial, which now comes as a result of ministry. Now, when Paul talked about it in Philippians 4.1, 1 Thessalonians 2.19, 1 Corinthians 9, where we read, it was related to ministry. 1 Peter 5.4, ministry. 1 Timothy 4.8, ministry. So, preaching the gospel... Brother Paul talked about preaching the gospel and not giving heed to deviations of itching ears. Not giving heed to deviations of itching ears. And this is for ministers and all of us that are here. The temptation is huge to preach what is popular so you can gather the crowd and have the fame and have the popularity and make all the money. The temptation is huge out there. For you to preach the other gospel. Which is not another. A gospel that is conventional. A gospel that is popular. Because it sounds nice to itching ears. There's a spirit called Semiramis. When it is in your family. When you make money, you won't see it. It has a way of putting holes in your pocket and punching holes in your bank account. So you are walking like an elephant, but you are eating like an ant. It's called semiramis. People like such things. It tickles their fans. They like it. There will be family course breaking for seven weeks. Every week, bring everybody in your village, everybody in your family, all your ancestors, bring them to the service. If not, you will never be free. So everybody will go and park people. The whole church will be parked outside, inside, everywhere. The people that are gathered are not looking for Jesus. Yeah. That 
is a crowd that is not heaven bound. That is a mixed multitude. That crowd is the same with the crowd at the sports stadium. But people that are looking for Jesus, people that are looking for Christ, those things don't tickle them. What moves them is the revelation of God's word. And there are not many. There are not many. Jesus said, narrow is the road that leads to life. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. And there are many that go that route. Those that go to life, he said, the road is so narrow. It's so narrow. And he said, there are only few. He was talking about trials, temptations. He was talking about the price of staying with the truth. The price of staying with the truth. The price of staying with the truth. When I started preaching this message, I've told you I've lost many people, but it doesn't mean anything. Huh? When I started, mama called me and said, honey, this thing you're preaching, from what I can see, you're going to lose a lot of people. I said, I've made up my mind to lose everybody, not just a lot. My mind is made. And I'm ready to go this road alone if I have to be alone. I told her. So I had counted the cost because I understood the implication of what I'm going to be preaching. One of my friends who have not spoken for a long time called my phone yesterday morning while I was studying. So I picked the call and I said to him, oh man of God, it's been months or years we have not spoken. He said, yes now. You have streamlined people that can preach in your church. You have made it difficult for people like us to preach in your church. Even if you invite me now, I will not come. Anybody that will preach on your pulpit must know what he is saying. So I laughed. I said, no, it's just for some time. He said, it's a lie. Forever. That's your pulpit forever. I said, don't be angry. I'm just trying to do my work because one day I will present my work before Christ. I don't want my work to be burnt. I don't want to suffer loss. My mind is made up. My mind is made up. All the way till I see him face to face. My mind is made up. It's too late at my age to be doing trial and error. It's too late at my age to be doing tinini tanana. No. It, it's gone. If I was a small boy, maybe I would do tinini tanana. There's a level you reach in life where you know that at that age, you shouldn't play in the sand with, with, with children. You should know that. And if you don't know that at your age, you are a fool forever. Teaching good? Yeah. This ministry has a lot of persecution. It's ex it costs you. Jesus said, you forsake father, mother, brother, houses, lands, the cost of discipleship. The cost of following. In a world of itching ears all over the place. Stay with the truth. Stay with the truth. Preach the truth. Don't compromise it. Life is not about cars and houses. Life is not about money and fame and popularity. There is life after this life. And life after this life is the real life. Majaka yana kekes. Libro zakala da baha. Nendo luda gagaya. One of my sons came to me, I told you. He said, Papa. All men of God are calling me and saying that uh, uh, this thing you're following your papa, Dr. Damina, to be preaching. Very soon, nobody will be inviting you. I say, hey, wait, 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 wait. This message is consecration. If you're not ready to be consecrated, you can't preach it. It will separate you. This message will separate you from the crowd and isolate you. It is called consent. The message itself is consecration. Number two, this message is light. When you start preaching it, people
people's intents around you will be exposed. I say, boy, if you're not ready, it's not too late. But if you're ready, let's go. I'm not begging you. I'm putting the facts to your face. You make the choice. I told him, when I started, I made up my mind to lose everybody. Not some. Mm -hmm. So that you know. He was looking at me. I said, so, make up your mind. I'm not forcing you. I'm surprised that there are still people following me. I'm surprised. And I have news for you. More people are hearing me now than before. Yeah. And now the people that are with me are quality people. They are people that are serious about Jesus Christ. If you're in the building, shout, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Teaching good this morning? Let's continue. So, Brother Paul, when he began to talk about fight the good fight of faith, he's not talking about fighting witches and wizards. The fight of faith is a fight to defend the message. The message is called the faith. The gospel of Christ is called the faith. So when he says, fight the good fight of faith, what he's saying is, fight and defend the message. Don't compromise the message. Confront anything that will try to contaminate the message. It's called a fight of faith. A fight to defend the message. I have fought a good fight. Brother Paul said that. I have fought a good fight. What fight? To keep the message. To keep the message. How many of you remember at a point Brother Paul said, all men have forsaken me. All. Everybody has left me. That is what comes with what we are preaching. We know what we are preaching. All men have forsaken me. He said, but I do not hold it against them. Mm -mm, I'm not angry. I do not hold it against them. He said, even Demas, Demas, my own son, has left me, having loved this present world. Not that he left Christ. Mm -mm. He left the message. He compromised the message so he can have some money, buy some cars, and gain some popularity. Demas has forsaken me. Alexander the coppersmith has done me much evil. God will pay him. That's the only one Paul added something. For Demas, he said that one, and I'm not holding it, but for Alexander the coppersmith, Zimana, God will pay him. When a man of God says that kind of thing, a man of God that does not pray judgmental prayer, when he says God will pay you, that one is worse than fall and die, be roasted, be cooked. That quiet one, God will pay him. Eh? <laughs> what Alexander did to Paul must have been too serious. Must have been too serious. Must have been too serious. Now, crown in the book of Revelation, metaphorically used, you will see it in Revelation 2.10 for time. Revelation 2.10, Revelation 3.11, Revelation chapter 4 verse 4, Revelation chapter 4 verse 10, Revelation chapter 6 verse 2, and Revelation chapter 9 verse 7, Revelation chapter 12 verse 1, and Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. You will see it all as crown. Read for me. Let me just read two so that you see it. Revelation 2.10. 2.10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that he may be tried, and he shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of I life. I will give thee a crown of life. Why? For the things you will suffer. For what? For the gospel. For the things you will suffer. He says some of you will enter prison for my sake. Some of you will enter prison for my sake. Is it not happening in the north? 
It's happening in northern Nigeria. It's happening in northern Nigeria. Some believers were caught, whether in Zamfara or Yobe State, and they were sentenced to, to be beheaded. They beheaded five of them for the gospel. For the gospel. What about the famous Leah that everybody has been talking about? Leah that is in the hands of Boko Haram is for the gospel. The girl said, I will not deny Jesus for freedom. Let me die as a Christian. And they released everybody else but kept her. What are you talking about? You think it's only old men that are hearing the gospel? There are little children in this service now that understand what I'm preaching. What are you talking about? The girl said, at the expense of freedom and being with my family, it's better I die and be with Christ than be with anybody on it. These are people that have understood who Christ means. Yeah. Well, rain is falling. I can't go to church. Rain is falling. So that when I get there, my clothes will not be soaked. People will be looking at me somehow. You are far from Christ. You are far from Christ. But if the governor sent for you for two million, you will tell the rain, soak me rain. Soak me so the governor will not have paid a price to collect that money. You have not known Christ. If our hope is only in this world, we are of all men most miserable. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Listen friends, there is life after life. There is life. Those of you that didn't hear my last Sunday message, go and get it on hell. Salvation and hell. Salvation and the lake of fire. Go and get it. Go and get it so that you are prepared for life after this life. So you won't say all I preach is grace, grace, grace. I am preaching complete grace. Complete grace even what you're hearing now is grace what you had last sunday on fire and hell is grace look at it say you shall be tried some of you shall be put in prison 10 days he said but there's a crown of life awaiting you glory to god revelation 4 10 the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. Cast day. their crowns. The word crowns in the book of Revelation is figurative like I said to you. It's the word stephanos, meaning a prize. Something you have worked for. Something you have worked for. Just like Jesus was crowned. Jesus was crowned in Philippians. The crown there was not something he was wearing on his head. I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Look at Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Yes. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Next verse. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. The prize. The there is a prize in the high calling. There is a prize in the high calling. What is the high calling? Ministry. Ministry has a prize. I press forward for the prize of the high calling. Nekatana. The ministry is high calling. The call to reintroduce Jesus to this generation is a high calling. Higher than any other call. Higher than any other assignment in life. Is it not for this I call him, brother Paul? Say, I forget the things that are behind. He says somewhere, I count all these things as dung. My achievements as a Pharisee. My achievement as a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I count it as dung for the excellency of Christ Jesus. Says now, I put those things behind. I press forward towards the high calling of God. That's why at the end of his life, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the message. I have kept the message. The faith there is the message. I have kept this message. For you to fight and keep the message means there will be distractions. 
there will be oppositions and there will be other shades of the gospel that will try to cause you to compromise there will be circumstances of life pressures i was with one of the greatest preachers of this generation greatest he's on every television station all over the world i was privileged to be invited by his ministry to come and preach for him when I got to where we were going to be preaching, we did some recording, the first few sessions. Then the third one, he now said to me that I should just look for a scripture somewhere, squeeze it. Let's use it and collect money. He said, with the way I'm talking, if I now push the scripture, that with the way I'm talking, we'll make millions and we will share it 40, 60. I told him, I will not do it. That is how I lost that television opportunity that is how i lost that exposure on the global platform i would rather lose that exposure and stay in my village and be at peace with christ some of you don't know the things we see that was my opportunity to blow the whole world i was on the best tv stations you can talk about the program was going to be on global tv and for weeks it was going to be on Desta, all the major TV outlets. We were taping for me. That was my moment. My friend looked at me and said, Dr. Damina, this is your moment. The whole world will shake after you hear you. He said, and you have it, man. You have it, man. You have it. But look at the compromise. For me to twist the scripture, to collect money. I said, I'm sorry. The moment I said, I'm sorry, the next taping, he asked me to go to the foyer and wait. That's how they removed me from the whole broadcast. And they never played the ones I recorded. Because I refused to compromise for mammon. You know how many millions of dollars I will have had for myself? I know what to do with money. But I would rather trek from America to Nigeria. Look, there are people money has not entered their eyes. I'm one of them, by the grace of God. I'm one of them. Till today, the program has not been aired. I was there. They took me from the hotel. Their protocol were there. They took me to a hotel. Mama was in America with me. She knows what I'm talking about. Leave that here. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have kept the message. Henceforth is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me, and not to me alone, but to all those who love his appearing. If I'm teaching, say, I hear you. Sometimes we need to let you know the things we have given up for what we are preaching, so you know we are not joking. I will have, in fact, after that broadcast, I will have had an office in America, I will have had an office. I will have had global partners giving me money every month and more people will have been calling me and I will have been everywhere. Maybe you won't see me in a choir bomb. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Maybe that will have been my final bye-bye to Nigeria. But I don't need it if I have to compromise the message. I have fought. This message is a fight. This message is a fight. I saw a bishop some other time. He said, Dr. Damina, I don't like you. I hate you. I said, why, sir? He said, you have made ministry too difficult for some of us. You are forcing us to study. Study, study, study. You are making people expect too much from us. And some of us at our age, we can't study. I say, leave the ministry, sir. Leave it. Study to show yourself approved unto God. I told him to his face. Sir, then you should leave the ministry. He told me I hate you. It's not from backyard. He didn't send somebody to we were standing face to face. He is older than me in age. But when it comes to this message, your age doesn't matter to me. My allegiance is to Christ. My allegiance is to the one who loved me. The one who died for me. My allegiance is to the one. 
who has prepared a place for me at the regency on the right hand of the Father. Glory to God. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.5 And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowded, except he strive lawfully. You are not crowned, except you strive lawfully. If you are doing this ministry to be rewarded by Jesus, there are laws that govern the ministry. There are laws. Jesus was crowned. How was he crowned? Hebrews 2, 7. Let's see how Jesus was crowned. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. The crown was the glory and the honor. It's not a cap he was wearing. The crown is a metaphor. It's a metaphor for honor. He was crowned with glory and honor. And what, how did it manifest? And did set him over the works of thy hand. That authority is a crown. The authority given to him was the crown. Just like you two, your crown are the people that get born again into the kingdom. Jesus' crown was the right hand of the Father. Regency on high. Seated. That was the crown. Look at Hebrews 2 9. So we understand more on Jesus' crowning. But we see Jesus. We see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death. Crowned with glory and honor. That's the crowning. The glory and the honor. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. That's the crown. So glory and honor is a prize. Something given to Jesus. To sit at the right hand of regency on high. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 and 6. I'm beginning to round up. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Six. The husband man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruit. Labor, labor, labor. So contextually, this has nothing to do with morality or immorality. This has to do with labor for the ministry. The crowning will be for ministry. It's not going to be whether you are a good guy or not. I mean, it's good to be moral. Very, I mean, don't get me wrong. But there's no crown for being moral. There's crown for ministry. The crown is for the work. The work. The kind of work you do in the kingdom. Read verse 7 of that scripture for me. Consider what I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. The word understanding is a Greek word sunesis. S-U-N-E-S-I-S. Sunesis. Understanding that is to apply this to your intellect. To apply this to your intellect. Look at verse 10 of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. I endure all things for the elect. That's for ministry. Because the elect are the people I am ministering to. So I endure these things for the elect's sake. Why? That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That they also may obtain the salvation. I endure for the ministry. I endure for the ministry. The work of the ministry. Not church attendance. There's no crown for church attendance. No crown. That you were coming to church and marking register. Does he have crown? Where the crown is, is labor to get people saved, disciple them, establish them. This is beyond church attendance. This is ministry work, which every one of you ought to be involved in. Except you don't have eternity in view. If you have eternity in view, huh? the ministry is your way out. A songwriter says, I have another world in view, in view. I have another world in view. He's talking about eternity. I have another world. This is not all that there is. There is life after this life. This life is limited. This life is transient. Have you ever imagined somebody lives a hundred? My uncle, I was just told my uncle died the other day. Died at 126. 126 years. So the man has lived long. But he passed a few weeks ago. Shortly after now, 
it will look like he never lived. Life here is transient. No matter how long you live, it's nothing to compare with eternity. This life is short. This life is small. This life is transient. Those of you that have precious people that have died 10 years ago, it's like they never lived. But there was a time they were bubbling as if they were going to be here forever. But one moment you turn, they are no more. Life is like a vapor. You wake up, you see it. After a few hours, it's gone. That's why investing only here is foolhardiness. Because the life after now is bigger than the life now. So investing into that life is wisdom. Jesus said, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where nobody can break through. He's talking about investing into eternity. Your life, your hours, your money, your strength into eternity. Because that is the only investment that guarantees return in the life to come. If I'm teaching good, say I hear you. Please, it's very important. It's very important. That's the only guarantee. So when we talk about salvation, that is a gift. After you are gifted salvation, there is a work. After you are gifted salvation, there is a work. On social media, there are people on Facebook who have made it a duty. Every time they are coming to hear me, they bring people to hear. They bring people in their numbers. They are drawing people to the message of Christ. They are doing evangelism aggressively. And there are others, they only hear and feel good. They do not know that there are many more, millions, billions around the world who ought to hear the message. And for that labor of bringing people to hear, dragging people on the platform, encouraging people to YouTube, ah, it has a great deal. One of my daughters in Canada called within the week and said, Papa, I'm in Canada. When I came to Canada, I thought I am lost. The only friend I have here, I went to the house. As they opened the door, it was you on their TV screen. So I said to them, do you know the man? They said, we don't know him, but this man, we live with him, we sleep with him, we wake up with him. His messages run in this house 247. In fact, because of him, we don't go to our church again. Because what they are teaching us is diluted. So we rather stay here and be in church on TV. All over the world. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all of Africa. Right into Saudi Arabia. We have people in Saudi, in, inside the heart of Arab, who are following what we are teaching in this church. Friends, you're the only one who is thinking that the message is in these four walls. If you go out there and breathe small, you will discover that the whole world is coming to the knowledge of Christ. Yeah. Somebody shout, I hear you. Yeah. And you're a part of it. Your givings, your prayer, your commitment to this assignment is giving us wings to spread the message. Somebody say, I hear you. And let me tell you, there are some of you when you appear before Jesus. He will give you a handshake. He will say thank you. You will be wondering where. He will tell you India. Half of India because of your giving came to the knowledge. Half of India. And you say but I never went to India. He said, but you gave money that transported the gospel there. And because of that they have come. There are many of you that will be rewarded for things you cannot explain. Just because you partnered with a genuine ministry that is passionate about getting the true message of Christ to people around the world. You'll be amazed on that day. Oh, that day. He said that we may not be ashamed at his coming. Say, I hear you. I'm not hearing you. Everywhere is quiet. I say, say, I hear you. You are saved, though. You are saved. But salvation is a gift. Beyond salvation, there is work. Somebody shout I hear you. I'm not hearing you at all. Thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. Now, so we have this background. And in the next service, I will now do exegesis on that Timothy 
chapter 2 verse 11 to 13. You know that's where we have been since Friday. We are trying to unlock that Timothy. Let me read it before we close. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Next verse. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Next verse. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So we want to interpret this verse. To interpret this verse is why we are traveling like this. Do you understand? Eh? We are traveling all this journey to interpret these three verses. And we will do it today in the second service. Because my time is up in this service. Are you blessed in the service? Say with me, I am saved. But after salvation, I have a bigger responsibility. Ministry. Stand on your feet. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I say 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 glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am saved, but I have eternity in view. I can see the world after this world, and I'm working hard. I'm working hard so that when I see Jesus, I will not be ashamed. I didn't hear your amen. Lift your right hand. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this service, on Facebook, on TV, on YouTube, around the world. I pray for all our campuses and everybody that you have drawn by yourself and brought them into the saving knowledge. And you have hooked them up with this assignment, this vision, this ministry. The mandate on us as a people to reintroduce Jesus to this generation and to flood the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. I pray this day, Lord, that these words will resonate in our hearts. That our hearts will understand the full import of what you are saying to us. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you that everyone here will continue to fight the good fight of faith. Everyone here will keep the faith in the name of Jesus. And you will finish the course. You will not only finish the course. You will finish the course with joy. In the name of Jesus. I decree grace upon your life. The blessing of God upon your life. And I declare by virtue of the word we have had today that even those that were in slumber, even those that were nonchalant, even those that were not committed, Lord, an awakening, a realization of the huge assignment, the humongous responsibility that is before us as a church will suddenly dawn on their understanding. And we thank you for grace upon this house. And we thank you for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness of sins. Thank you that our names are written in the book of life. But above that, thank you also for equipping us, building us with your word, and bringing us face to face to a place of responsible Christian living. And we give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says amen like thunder. Are you excited this morning? Well, if you're excited, go ahead and celebrate what you have in Christ. Is that how you celebrate? Amen. Get a good offering. Let's give and rejoice. Let's give into this, into what Christ has done for us. Everybody on TV, Facebook, YouTube, all our campuses, get a good offering with an understanding of what our monies are doing all over the world. Let's give with joy and let's give with rejoicing and let's give with excitement. Those of you watching, 30 days continues at 11 a.m. this morning and tomorrow it continues also because I still need tomorrow to finish what I'm teaching. I've not finished. We have till the 1st of August. Is that true? We have till the 1st of August. I I'm not sure I'm going to finish because I still have some things to finish in this particular season 5 because season 6 is a different ball game. God punish the devil. Lift your offerings up to heaven, Father. We rejoice and we thank you for the privilege of giving. We give with joy and we give in honor of what Christ has done. Thank you for our givings today that rise before you a sweet smell and offering acceptable in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says amen like thunder. Hit it, let's do it as we celebrate. Glory to God.
It's a wonderful morning. Wonderful in every dimension. Spiritually, physically, psychologically, and otherwise, because he's got your back. God has your back in every ramification. He has not just saved your soul. He has saved you all round for you to enjoy life here on the earth. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You may take your seats for a moment and let's continue in our giving, in our worship. Our giving is our worship. And I want to give opportunity to everyone who has set aside some kingdom investments and you, you know, because you have a mind to promote, to be a part of those giving to make this gospel go around the earth. You have some portion of your money here with you this morning. Please stand on your feet, come to the front and drop in the basket while I say a prayer. Thank you, Father. It's so wonderful that we can do things in your name. We are giving in your name. We deliberately, consciously do this because we understand that our monies send forth the gospel in the different direction it is required. And by your spirit, this morning is go with the flow of the move of God's word to reach every nation, to reach every kindred, to reach every tongue. We deliberately, consciously give. We set aside portions of our monies. We thank you for this ability. We thank you for this knowledge. We thank you for this understanding. We take advantage of it to propagate the gospel, to take advantage of it that we may heap for ourselves rewards in the world's coming. We thank you for the privilege that we have. And as we have opportunity today, we give. Even those who have not had this knowledge in themselves before, today by knowledge, they have come to queue in into this blessing, into this goodness, into this manifestation of the sons of God. Thank you, Father, because we are partakers. Receive the glory in our lives. Receive the glory in our givings. Receive the glory in our endeavors to promote the gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Are you here at all? We're also going to give a general offer. Listen, a time is coming. Nobody will announce giving. We're looking forward to that day. I am looking forward. You know, in those days when we, you know, said, okay, the one I can remember very well is the, our wooden seats or um, block seats. And Papa will prophesy and, you know, say on the day, uh, a day is coming where we'll sit in chairs that will be hanging or suspended. You know, we've started because the kind of chairs you're sitting on folds on its own without your effort. So it's, it's a good thing to prophesy. So a time is coming, I'm looking for that day because you know, all these, um, these precious minutes, we can use it and sing and feel good and be happy while givings are going on in your phones, in your iPads, and you're just dishing it with, you know why? Because of maturity. You don't need to say, oh, if you have investments, you know, bring it because you already threw them in. Listen, if every one of you wake up to responsibility, Nobody will need to be announcing. Even you there in your student corner, and you give your 1,000 faithfully, and you give your 50 naira or 100, whatever capacity you are in, or you give your 1 million, you give your 10 million, and not giving according to your environment, but according to the need of the gospel. Before you know it, this gospel will saturate, will paint everywhere, and we won't be, you say, uh, I gave the first offering. I gave the, uh, I don't have a second offering. Uh, I gave the third one. You know, and we're still doing baby things, but time is coming. Say amen. When nobody will need to pat your back, give, give, give. You will give because you are a son who has, you know, awoken to responsibility in the house of his father. If you agree, say amen. So let's stand on our feet now and give our general offerings. It's still helping some of us now because sometimes when you say, okay, put all your offerings together and give. Ah, not so many people are that strong. To be honest, so we give you first offering, we give you second offering, so that you can say, yes, I gave one there. Okay, let me give again this second time. But we are growing past it. Amen? Don't keep your money to yourself. Keep it for the gospel. I told you also that it is possible to give more out of your income to the gospel and still live comfortably and lavishly. Is it true? Some people are already experiencing it. Where your incomes, the most of it, the majority of it is pumping towards the gospel. If you desire such a thing, it starts now that you have very limited you know, amounts of money. It will show in how you are doing, what you, you know, whatever you are doing with your money. That time is coming and it's not very long. He that is faithful in little, to him much responsibility will be given. Amen? Don't shy away from giving. Don't shy away from taking responsibility. Don't shy away from pushing the gospel because it's the best thing that we can push in our lives, that gives dividends in all ramifications. I'm a witness. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Giving is not loss. You're not losing your money. You are investing into a system that cannot fail. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for these offerings that we offer to you today. Lord, that we ask that you cause it to blow, to increase in every dimension, to push the gospel forward, to make the house of God beautiful, where we worship, the place of your feet glorious, where we come in to serve you, to make all the instruments work, to make things move, to pay staff, to pay, uh, you know, equip, service equipment, everything that we do with the gospel, that this money is in our hands, you will blow on it, limited as it is in, in, their, in their figures. You will cause it to increase, to expand like the small fish that that little boy had, to do so much more. Bless it in the hands of those who are holding it, those who are going to use it, that you will blow on it and cause it. Because with thanksgiving, we give today with knowledge, with understanding. And this week, the lines are falling to us in pleasant places. We have a goodly heritage. We have ideas. We have innovations. We meet contacts. We meet people who give us ideas. We are, we are covered and protected from people who will cause us loss in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, because we'll come back next week or next, um, tomorrow with testimonies from every ramification. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. shout a powerful amen. amen now i want to make this announcement now so that all our campuses will hear and everybody watching on television and facebook next sunday i'm going to be receiving an offering from all of you for myself next sunday for myself um <clears throat> you need to honor me for the label 30 days okay so 
I need you to I need you to take the time, you know, prayerfully prepare an offering for me for next Sunday. Next Sunday, I will take the offerings. I'm giving you one week to pray and prepare the offering. Pray and prepare the offering. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to say much, but, you know, uh, the truth of the matter is, it is unrighteous for me to labor, and you receive all of this labor and just walk away. You know, I've not done it before, but I sense to do it now. Because it's time for everything. You're matured and you, can, you, you, you ought to do what is right. Everybody in this house. So prepare a very good offering for me next Sunday. And I will take that offering from everybody. Amen? I said amen. Are you happy about it? Okay. All right. Now let me also mention that the service, in the, the next service at 11 o'clock, I'm going to push into some very serious things. Tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday will be the last day of 30 days of glory. And there's so much more to teach. But from tomorrow, the ministers' conference, ministers are coming from all over the country to join us. But even in the ministers' conference, I will still be teaching soteria in some part of it because I need to finish the syllabus for season five so that in season six, we can face another direction. But have you been blessed these 30 days of glory? Glory to God. Well, you know, guys, we love you. Don't forget to join the next service and uh, enjoy the grace of God till we catch up with you to, to in, at 11 o'clock and from tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. every evening till Wednesday. We love you. Enjoy grace. Let's celebrate our viewers around the world. Praise God. Praise.